guys will be wide awake by now. And I'm continuing from where we talk about opening ourselves to the Spirit and seeing the realm of the Spirit. And I thought about how we actually can see Jesus in our heart and open ourselves to Him. Because we start with where we start off with, with Matthew chapter 5, verse 8. So Jesus did say that uh, a little while longer the world will see me no more. The world cannot see him, but he says, you will see him. <laughs> so it does tell us that he's going to come back after his resurrection in such a way that the world cannot see him, but those who know him, love him, can see him. Now he's not just talking about visions. But he's talking about seeing him. And uh, I'll show you in the scriptures how that unless we see Jesus in our heart, we cannot be changed. And so I'll uh, list uh, the next uh, area of scripture that we're going to look at is 2 Corinthians chapter 4. So let's look at 2 Corinthians chapter 4. And uh, let's uh, read from, uh, let get someone to read from verse um, uh, 5 and 6. I mean, not a good job. I that the light of God has shined into our heart. So let's say this our heart, the light of God has shined into our heart. And that is for every person born again. So what happens when the light of God shines inside? In verse 6 of your Bible, it says to show the light in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God of, of God 
in the face of Jesus Christ. Inside verse 6. The face of Jesus Christ is in your life. So, but it's several levels down. First, there's light, knowledge, so, on the day that we were born again, there is an image of our Lord Jesus in our heart. And that's what everyone who is born again. That image of the face of Jesus Christ in our heart just needs to grow. Second Corinthians 4 6 is connected to Matthew chapter 5 verse 6. The blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. When the blood of Jesus Christ cleans our heart and then He gives us a new heart, that new heart has the face of Jesus Christ standing inside. And as a Christian, you might say, why should I try to visualize or recognize or see God in my heart? And the question why can be answered by the verse in 2 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 18. So let's have a heart and let's say this is Jesus. It says we just as the light shine on us, in this direction. Second Corinthians 4 6. Second Corinthians 3 18, it is we. It said we unveil face, we behold the glory of God, the same glory. So the glory of God shine on us to help us to see. But we must allow, we must look back at the glory of God and then have His image form clearly inside each one of us. And it says that as we see, then we are changed. We are transformed. The Bible says that we are being transformed into the same image. So there is our Lord Jesus and this is us. And the same image is equal if this one and this one must see the same thing. So do 
Because how much you are transformed is equal to how much you see. If we see a little bit, we are transformed a little bit. If we see a lot, we are transformed a lot. Based on this verse, every Christian must see. It is not an option. Uh, it is not like something you could choose. Oh, I don't want this one. This is a must. It is what Jesus wants us to have. And this was refers to every Christian, not just to the prophets. So now we got the scripture that tells us the pure shall see God. We must we can see God in our heart. Jesus says you will see me, but the world cannot see me. And we see that there is that uh, light shining on us, which is actually the face of Jesus. The face of Jesus is shining at us, and then he asks us to look back at the face of Jesus. How can you run away from the fact that we can see Jesus? So we know we must. The question is how? How does that happen? We have to look at the scriptures deeper. Second Corinthians chapter 3 18, the key verse is the word mirror. And if you read the, the verse again, and I tell you, not have to be my and uh, again, it's going to be difficult to translate, but in the English, in the words, it say, uh, beholding, you're going to look at what is in your Burmese translation, beholding as in a mirror. Is that exactly what the word is saying? Yes, sir. Like you look like you're like a mirror. Yes, sir. Okay. It has the word beholding, which is looking inside. In the word yes, yes. Okay. And here's what I let you know. The word beholding is not in the Greek. There is no Greek word, there is no Bible word. The whole thing, beholding as in a mirror, comes from only one word. And uh, well, that's, uh, they want to and uh, it comes from the Greek word cut off. Trick. Oh, Grace, why is it not cut off? Triple boy. Cut off trick so. That's a Greek word. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 
What the word original word just means mirror. Man, uh, I'm going to test it still. Mirror is a noun. Man, okay. But they use the noun as a verb, an action word. Oh, sorry, so mirror is noun. A noun, N O U N. Mirror is a thing, a, a noun. Yes. But in this word, they use the noun as a verb, an action word. No, so it nas the logo, do not be my computer solution or bug me at all. But they have a little bit of shop shampoo for your action. But we have to do that. You got that across, right? So fantastic. We can see your big now. Okay. They turn. From the noun in the English and now into a verb, so the word should have been translated mirroring. The get again, not only in the public, but a but the name, I should probably the bala dam is wrong, mirroring the body, a manti chair of a damn to body. So transforming is like the image of Jesus in our heart. We allow it is a it is a passive word. We allow the light to come into us and make a mirror. You see, uh, I don't have a mirror here, but uh, I'm gonna illustrate. Okay, okay, okay. This can be like a mirror. Okay, a mirror doesn't do any action. Correct. Uh, so so let's say I have uh, your picture inside. Can you wave your hand? Okay. The mirror also wave the hand. Yeah. Not because the mirror move, he move. Yeah. Oh, man, go to the camera. Man, go to the camera. Let's go there. Let me man, go there. Let's 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 go there. The mirror only lets the picture come. So, man, go to the camera. 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 So, if the mirror is dirty, Man, go to the camera. Man, go to the camera. Man, go to the camera. Then the picture is not clear. We cover up the image. So we are going to cover the image. But if the mirror is very clean, I will get a bag of chocolate. No one to mess with it. Then his picture is there. Do ye? Do you see that man? Do you want to see that? Do you see that? Do you want to see that? Do you want to see that? In this verse, the heart is like a mirror. So when the Lord has made the image, just as the best man, when the Lord has made the image, the image. If the heart is clean. Turn the Lord up. That's the name of the Lord. The face of Jesus is clear. Pray for him in our heart. Let me choose the name of the Lord. You don't have to try to see Jesus. You just have to clean and be holy. We allow his image to come into us through. Because the light is already shining. And so the word mirroring actually just means I open myself more. Now, the next thing, what is the tissue that will clean and wash our heart? Okay, well, now we will talk about the tissue that will clean and wash our heart. Okay, well, now we will talk about the tissue that will clean and wash our heart. We look back and this was in 1950. And uh, you can read the words again, short verse, Matthew 5, verse 8 again. The next word that we are looking at is the word for Matthew 5.8, the word fear. 
The word pure comes from when uh, you really got the hard part of translation comes from the Greek word ka ta ros. So now you get that chance, chance to raise the glory of grace and up to there ka ta ros kani la ju boy. Kataros has been translated as a word clean. Kataros has been In the Gospel of John, chapter 15. Verse 3. We read verse 3. Okay. Verse 3. And it says that Jesus said, You are already clean because of the word which I speak to you. And the word clean in John 15 verse 3 is the same word Kataros. Jesus gave us the tissue or the soap to clean. He says, My word has made you clean. So the more we let his word come into us, the clearer the picture of Jesus because our heart is purified. It is important to have a lot of the word of God. And that one flows with the verse we touch on in the morning, Hebrews 4 verse 12, which we can read. The word of God is like a two-way sword cutting, separating the sword. That is the same word that clean our heart. The problem with the mirror seeing Jesus is not the Jesus. It's not on the side of Jesus. Jesus wants us to see him. The problem is how much we are clean, then we can see Jesus here. And it is just like I see his image. Uh, here I can see uh, There you are, I can see you. If I'm looking this way at you, I cannot see you, but I can see your image. So, our mind, our soul cannot see Jesus. Our mind, our soul is looking at our Follow your heart. So, as I look at the heart, if the heart is very clean, I can see Jesus. So, you're not like directly looking at Jesus. You're looking at Jesus reflected in your heart. But if your mirror is not drawing, but if your mirror is not drawing, and I draw, I look at his image, and then uh, let's say reflect, and then I draw a moustache, I draw a turban, I draw, so I say, why are you got a moustache? But he doesn't have a moustache. No, he doesn't. 
But when I see whatever is in my heart is what is reflected. If it's not good, then I see something wrong. Now, even when a person has open vision, close vision, or all kinds of visions, when they see Jesus, they are still seeing Jesus through the heart. But they got used to see so long that they can flow along. Those of us who are not used to visions and revelation, we don't know how to see. So when you read Matthew 5 verse 8, blessed are the pure in heart, they shall see God. And then you make your heart as pure as possible, you keep looking, looking. You're supposed to look into your heart. Because the image is already there. So there's a Bible verse in Romans 10 that says that you know, God is in heaven, we are down here, how do we reach God? Then the book, the book of Romans chapter 10. And uh, I'll give you the words to read. Okay, here it is. And uh, verse 6 uh, to verse 6 to verse 8. So it says, who, who will rise up there to reach Christ or, or descend to reach Christ? But it says, God is near you. The word is near you, is in your mouth and in your heart. So when we talk about seeing Jesus, we are not asking you to keep saying, uh, 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 where to see Jesus. We are asking you to look into your heart. That's what we're going to practice today. We are bit more scriptures to lay the theology. So now that we can see the whole picture that uh, the mirror, uh, seeing Jesus mirroring and that uh, cleaning katarizo is that which is inside us. Uh, katarizo which is the pure heart is the word kataros, uh, which is means our heart must be pure, cleansed, clean by the word. So Jesus said, John 15 was free. My word has made you clean. The times when you pray, worship, read the word, meditate, and the word of God fill you is when you see Jesus clearly. 
But if I take the mirror of my heart and then I go to the world, sometimes the worry of the world comes and then uh, you think about this life and then the dirt, the dust all get up and then you cannot see Jesus clearly anymore. Then you must come back to the word of God and meditate on the word and have the word clean you. Then after some time, the image of Jesus becomes clear. But if we learn how to preserve the, the word of God in our heart when we go out everywhere so we don't worry, we're not, we're not worthy, we don't get greedy, we don't do all the wrong thing. The image of Jesus will always be preserved by everyone. We all carry the image of Jesus. <laughs> Some of our mirrors are very clean. Some are filled with worries. Filled with the worry of this life. Or any other thing that makes it clear. Which is why every day we must read the Bible, read the Word and then it cleans us. And then we come back to John chapter 14 again. When Jesus tells us about seeing him. And uh, this time. When Jesus talked about uh, you will see me because I live, you will live also because my feet. Also read verse 21. You notice in verse 21, Jesus said, He who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. So, Jesus in our heart, number one, is Tata Prinzo, like a mirror. Number two is Tata Ross, pure in our heart, clean in our heart, is uh, number one, number two. And number three is John 14 verse 21 that you just read just now in John 14 21 is the word manifest. It's a um, here in the English and let me know who my brother is translating to the chip dog to have a we read again at once. Uh, what's going on? Okay. So in the Burmese language, when Jesus says, I will love him and manifest myself. 
sell to India. What does a Burmese uh, language translate manifest as? Both in Sasa. Both in Sasa. That means to be well. He will do for my glory. Okay. I will be glorified because of him. Like this. Oh. I will be glorified because of him. Oh, so, so Jesus says that if you love me, I will love you and I will glorify you with me. Yes, yes, yes. In the Burmese translation. Right, right, right. The right? Yes, yes, sir. Not the right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Right now, my name. Okay, so the actual Greek word, so today you learn three Greek words. Katarizo, uh, Katarizo, Kataros. But the third Greek word, why we go to the Greek is so that the original translation. And the original translation manifests. Okay. It's the word M Fa Nizo. So praise the God is written in Fa Nizo. And the root word is the word Fa Nizo. The Greek word phanizo means I will show myself to you. Yes. Oh. The great grace the guy is phanizo so I got not going to not going to dish 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 not going to I will love you and show myself. I think the Burmese Bible, Adam Miran Jackson translate. Yes. He translates from English. He didn't translate from Greek. Okay. That is why when Jesus says, if you love me, I will love you back and show myself to you. In verse 22, Jude asked him, how will you show yourself to us? That's in verse 22. And then Jesus answered. And so Jesus said. If anyone loves me, he will keep my word. My father will love him. We will come and make our home. Now, when you're at home with someone, you should to see the person. If you're at home with a person, you should to see the person. So if I visit your home and uh, then I say, you know, anybody in? Then you say, oh yeah, my wife and three children are in. Okay, well, let's see that. You say, you cannot see that. Why? Because uh, you just say they are at home. No, no, they are at home, but cannot see. Because at home, I can touch, I can see, I can say hello, I can eat together and uh, talk together. That's at home. So if Jesus says, I'm at home with you, that means every day you eat, you say, Hi Jesus. When you get in the morning, Hi Jesus. Uh, when you sit at night, Hi Jesus. You always have Jesus at home. I don't know, you should not do it. I don't know, you should not do it. 
sabado. Ang sabado niya, pati yung sabado. Ang sabado niya, pati yung Ah, yes, at home. Yeah. Ah, 23 says at home. It says at home, right? We will make our home in here. The home in the Bavis. What did they do? That's at home. Come on, come on. Place a board mansion. That means it's part of your home. Oh, okay. Even if Jesus said, I will make my place with you, I mean, the word place means house or home or mansion. That means Jesus is saying we will be together in the same house. And the original word Fanizo means to see with the eyes. The word uh, fanizo, which is translated many stress in the English means that it comes to your level where you can touch, feel and see. Okay. Uh, Manifest. You see, sometimes you cannot see air. But I can feel the air. Because the air moves, I can feel the air. But my eyes cannot see the air. The air when it moves becomes manifest to my feelings. That's what it means manifest. Something invisible becomes Visible, hearable, touchable, feelable. Like whatever you all were doing just now in the dancing, you know? <laughs> so, manifest means that you can feel, see, touch, hear. And you might ask if that is true, how come everyone cannot see Jesus that easily? So even if you open your heart, 
Amin Hari Amin So he must learn to be still and know that the Lord is God Jom lu kini awak nanti di sini macam apa? Jom dia ada itu bayar ada sih orang di kampung. And you can use our Bible verses you have. In English, we got you might yield, surrender, worship, love, adore, all these words. Kalau orang orang kau perlu jadi cahaya orang tinjau lu. English sama sih lor, yours, surrender, 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 worship, love. Adore, adore semua. Kita lu tu yang orang kau lu ada cerita kau ada mana? So you become like a mirror. You just say, Lord, let all your light come to you. I yield to you. Come on, we did that. Hello, that we did. Come on, tell me to let it go. I did not. We were young. I don't know. I don't know. Can something happen to you? Jesus is holding you. Yeah, yeah, they will. Can we be able to do it? It's not you trying to hold Jesus. We don't want to let that be done. Come on, Jesus must hold you first. Then you hold Jesus. Because Jesus is Jesus is bigger than than you. There is a story of this person who is operating a a a some sort of construction on a tall building. A story. Story. Oh, we did the book marking. Near you, so we have to talk about it. And then uh, something happened, and uh, the person uh, sort of almost fall down and die. And then uh, they were, he was just hanging only onto the rope. A rope, speak a rope. And everybody at the bottom. On the building, panic. Ah, the person is gonna fall. And then, two times, two, two weeks, and you know, all of them. Ah, I'm not gonna get out of here. I'm not gonna get out of here. I'm not gonna get out of here. So they call the fire people. All that they quickly go all the way. They took some time to get out because it's a construction building. They go all the way up. And then, then you show me that, me that you go by, me that the money problem. And then the problem will get the judge. So I need to go about the kind. After several hours, they bring the person down. And then they ask the person, How do you manage to hang on for so long? Ah, but you know, can I? I don't think I can. I don't think I can. I don't think I can. Person said, No. When I realized I was there, the rope was long enough. I tied the rope around me. And then, can I? Why do you want to take a minute? I don't know. 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 I was not holding the rope, the rope was holding me. <laughs> and I was enjoying the view until they come and get me. <laughs> so in the same way, we can, we can only lay hold of that which Jesus has laid hold of us. Philippians three verse twelve. 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 Did you see that word there? We lay hold of that which he lay hold of us. In point one, you let Jesus hold you. And you're just resting in Jesus. You must enter the position of rest. And uh, like a little child resting in the bosom of the father. You are not trying to create something, you are not trying to make something, you are just enjoying 
You're not trying to ask for something, you're not trying to pray for something, you just want to love Jesus. That's a place we must enter first. And then, on number two, there is a spiritual law that tells you that every image and every thought that you have in that position has a cause and has a source. Cause means something making. Uh, source means it came from somewhere. Okay, I illustrate with a fan. Okay, I know. Okay. I am feeling wind. And it's causing uh, my hands to feel something glowing. Yeah. I'm going to borrow her. Oh, you need it? I borrow it. Okay. I just sit there. Okay. Go and look at her hand. Look. Okay. Oh, that's a so, now, the cause of the hair blowing all over depends on how near I bring. When you're not trying to think, 
When you're not trying to see anything or visualize, your thoughts will still keep thinking. And if you have a good imagination, your imagination will still keep playing. So the question I ask, what do you think when you're not thinking? I mean, you're not trying to think, you're just resting and then you're still thinking because as long as you're alive, you will think. Or, what do you feel when you're not trying to feel anything? Or what do you see when you're not trying to see anything? Every image has a cause and a source. Okay, just now the whole lunch we were talking, I think one, two, three, four, five, six. I was sitting here, the daughter was sitting here, we were just talking. Okay. Uh, part of the talking, I'm doing the talking, but I tried to view and sense in the spirit when I was sensing the spirit. Even right now, when I stand next to him, I also sense something. I open my five senses, creature senses. And as I open my spy senses, of course, uh, I want to hear what Jesus is doing and sense what the Spirit is doing. And then Jesus might allow me to send some of the things around me. Now, just now, now is a different thing. Just now, as we were doing that, as we were talking and all that, I just suddenly felt something on the heart area. I didn't say anything. Because we have a good time talking. But the Lord was showing me that uh, there was some sort of a uh, heart condition. I, I was sensing it coming from either yourself or you, like I was looking in your direction. You sir, or uh, you ever had a heart condition? I 
And as I said something on the side, and then I said, and it was like coming in this direction. I tomorrow I'll teach about how to look for the right direction. But it's coming from this direction. And I know that he, he possibly has some problem with the weak stomach or some stomach condition. And then, and then we check, you know, does he have any sort of pain problems or some other before the class? Yeah. Uh, and then we check, you know, does he have any sort of pain problems or some other before the class? Okay, yes, sir. Say, I don't know that. Holy Spirit knows. I am sure. Now, what was I doing? I must realize that everything that I sense and feel and hear came from somewhere. And that is why to hear the Spirit sometimes you need that moshe, that kohete. In order to feel. Now, what was I doing? 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 But when you become more sensitive, you can be anywhere here 24 hours. So that you don't need the ammo to create the atmosphere for one hour before you get here. Uh, you, so usually people are not so good yet, they need one hour worship to hear. But if you're very good and sensitive, you can be in the street or anywhere and you don't need worship, you just go anywhere you can sense. So, you can see that 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 because the Lord gives you a new start. We thank you, Father God. All stretch your hands to this So sometimes you try to be at rest and then you open to everything that you're hearing then if you're very worried about your rental or your money all you will receive is money so 
because the cause of your worry. Ah, this one is solution. I did not choose this. Just like when I was doing my job, boy, is creating the image of my life. When I am doing yoga, I am doing this. But I do not know what I am doing. I am the cause of your worry. When I am doing yoga, I am doing this. Is causing your thoughts to flow in the direction of worry or fear. It is both the source and the cause of the interference. Now you know why when you open yourself to the spirit, you must be pure if you are not pure in heart, you will get all kinds of image which is not from God. And you're disobedient to God in any way. The sin of disobedience can actually open a door and the enemy can get a wrong image. That is why when we teach people to open to the spirit, we always emphasize purity of heart. And uh, so right now, if you have a piece of paper or whatever there is, uh, just close your eyes and pray for a moment in the spirit. Just enjoy the presence of God. This is worship. Uh, right now, no need to sit down. Okay. Yeah. And we just uh, sing in the spirit of a while. Um, we thank you, Lord. We bless in the name of Jesus.
Whatever you're seeing now, whatever is coming to you, has a cause and a source. Okay, just remember what these people are about to ask you. Okay, you open your eyes again. Okay. That may be you see here or any thoughts. Or just black.
Because if you interrupt it, you interrupt the flow of what God was trying to show you. You let the story, the picture, the thoughts go finish. You let, you let, you let the thoughts or the picture flow, flow like a river. So let it flow like a river finish. And then when when it's finished, then you come out of it, then you can use your mind or the your knowledge or your wisdom to analyze what it means. So like when we were worshipping our brother here to say, see some pictures of his past that came to him. There is one and two receiving. Then number three, he's wondering what does this mean and why he is that way. Then number three, he's thinking, okay, what does this mean? What does it mean? Then he uses his mind. And that's how you know God wants him to confess to him and, and release him so that he entered to something great. Uh, anyone want to volunteer what you saw, what you what came to you just now so we can help you. When we were worshipping Hallelujah just now, some things might come to you. Thoughts, images, and all that. If you have that, uh, raise your hand, then I will come and help you. This training. Anybody here? Anybody else? Looking at what he sees, looking at what he 
Because when you got more of your senses on the thing, it's more accurate. The more senses look at the thing, and the more it feels of your senses, the more whole you see the picture. So for him is a sense of fearfulness or feeling. So to a jigaro And while we are talking, I'm preaching, I'm also opening myself to hear. About this because as we talk, I can also feel and see something to help him along. It's linked to something financial. So, that was what I picked up. Is linked to something financial, and uh, is a situation come before before he, in a time of worship. And actually, the Lord was trying to say something in this life. So, can I about some sort of provision? When you talk about people like that, some people now, what I want you all to do, which is a good thing, stretch off your hands with you. Yeah, but all of you all pray in the spirit and let me hear what you all think out. Let's pray for some.
And what it's like is that when he was sharing that, I sense that that has been going on for some time. So in the past, because when you analyze it, if that one belong to the past, the present or the future can upset the application. And my sense when he was sharing that was that it was something in the past. But there's someone here who saw some things in the future. Anybody pick up anything? She did, huh? I pick up some things, but yes. I saw that there's something in his life which is coming, which is much much better, and he's worried about the outcome. So like there's something away from him. Okay. And uh, so when we put everything together, remember this, no matter what everybody say, anybody interpret other people's visions around. Most important person is yourself. What you yourself pick up and understand. It's greater than what anybody else pick up. Because we are all responsible for our own life. Other people are not responsible. In Acts chapter 21, when Agabus the prophet came and prophesied over, over Paul that he would be imprisoned in Jerusalem, everybody reacted. Okay. Everybody tell him don't go to Jerusalem. But Paul said, I already know about this. He already know he will be in prison. Even before Agabus prophesied in Acts 20, he already told the, the efficient elders that he know he will not see them again because he knows reasons are waiting for him. So Paul didn't listen to everybody. He did, but he didn't just follow them. He followed his own personal. And he says he was still go. And then everybody blessed and prayed and then in Acts 21 and then he died. So at the end of the day, his own personal decision, if it's his life, his answers will be for God. And so remember always, your life is your responsibility. Thank God for what everybody else sees for you. They might see some things that you miss, they might bring attention to some things that you never get attention to. But you must make your own decision. The privilege is always yours. And 
what I pick up and we will pray for him. Uh, that one is the past, and that one is the concerns of the present. And what I pick up was his future. That uh, as the end of uh, end of February, end of March. And I see a, a, a picture of a motorbike. <laughs> and I saw like uh, it was carrying something towards it. And he said, Yeah, that she was on the car, on the cruise on the way. And by the way, you own a motorbike, you have a motorbike. What about some of the shots? You don't have. You don't have one. So that's the Lord's comfort was to him. So when we pray, we all can get different things. The Lord has it. Yeah. And, and you can see even before you go off today, the Lord has different things. Lord open doors for you. The Lord will bring you to a new relationship. It's something where I am going to do in the next year. So you have to go so low and I got to the damn so much boy. And I don't see the boy and also the Lord is going to release your faith and future to greater things. And I imagine you are buying those who achieve us on the level of time. The Lord is not changing the spirit of worship into the area of sensing, knowing the Lord's presence. So we find the people of the Lord all the different things. And the sister is now sitting there worshiping. When you worship the Lord, you're going to sense the Lord's feelings. So you're going to sense the Lord's feelings. So you're going to sense the Lord's feelings. I, your angel has been talking to me and telling me that uh, uh, when you study the word, you read the word, you understand more. And the Lord says, you need to revelation. Every one of you have received something from God. See, when, when, when you open yourself to the Spirit and you pray for people or you're even just in love with Him, the Lord will show you many, many things. Remember, don't take everything as that says the Lord. As that says the Lord. The Lord God of all my needs. Just take it that you're picking something up. And the Bible uses this word. Paul says, I perceive. So what do I do here? So that means you send, you pick up something. Oh, and you're still trying to understand what he's trying to show you. So, to, to my machine, and your object, to my, that's why the object, my family, and so on, to some of it, no song. Even though it's the Lord Himself giving all these things. We must be careful to simply use, that's it, Lord, that's it, the Lord, because when you see that's it, the Lord, no one can reason, no one can. We still got to check whether something is from the spirit or the soul. 
that a good prophet or a good pastor or a good gift of prophecy will not give you the yes and no answer. Because if a person does that in a man of God, a pastor, a prophet, a gift of God does that, you will never make your own decision again. And you know that when I am more so, when I am more prophetic, when I am more so, 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 you will be dependent on somebody to hear God for you. And God never wants any of his children to die. There is a lot of wrong teaching in that area, so people become, uh, when they cannot hear God anymore, every time they need something, they must go to that person again. But if God speaks the prophecy, He will give you some sort of knowledge or wisdom or guidance enough so that you can make your decision. So that the decision you make, what you have is you got this natural knowledge to look at to make a decision. And then with opening to the spirit of prophecy, you got more information that you cannot gather in the natural to make a decision. And usually the more information you have and more information that you normally don't have that you now have will always help you to make a better decision. And that's what we We get more information. And the privilege of decision is uh, Having that said, let's all pray for her. And tell me what you hear.
Africa is a background with some trees, local trees and Now because I don't know what was the other information, I need to check. You see, when you have proper vision, you must always check. And then we don't study and read the Bible principles and follow the character of Christ anymore. 
On the other side, if we are really loving the Lord and we follow the Bible, follow the Bible, and we are open to the Spirit, we don't expect any other information, which is useful. So we must walk both in the Word and in the Spirit, and not just one. So I described the vision and this is my analysis which might be wrong, might be right, can be corrected by anybody. No one who sees the vision, no matter how accurate, must be so proud that they say nobody can write the interpretation. Never be proud. And, and never be unteachable. So this is my analysis of the vision. This person that I see is involved in helping you solve the problem. In my vision, I don't sense that that person got the money to buy <laughs> But I sense that if you work together with this person, so that should you sell the place, then you say, look, I will bless you this much, but you help me now. Then the whole place can be sold at a fantastic good price with God's blessing. And if you are blessed, uh, that person will help you to bless you. And if because of relationship we have to talk to this person, then you can ask maybe other friends or wise people to sit down to help both of you come up with a solution. Is it prophecy is good? We didn't get a yes and no answer, but we got a direction. And that is what prophecy is for, it's not a shortcut. But it's to help us with more data from God and Spirit to help us make a better We still have to work hard, we still have to think, we still have to analyze. But I feel so happy now because I know that when we work together,
know the burden financially that she bad. So we pray, Lord, that you will help all these things to be resolved so that she can have peace of heart, peace of mind, and they have sufficient finances to do all that she desires. And we ask her for a good buyer. And we ask for a good buyer for this property. And we ask that you provide for her, get a, give her a place that she could be happy with. Her. Thank you, Father, for your blessing on her life. Jesus' name. So we pray for her daughter, she has a son. 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 Okay. Father, we bless you, Lord. March the 8th. Father, we pray for our son. Uh, and we pray for everyone who are children here who are going to education, to sitting exams. We pray for your blessing, Lord, in St. Paul. Bless with wisdom, Lord, and let me know the Lord. Let his heart go with God, let wisdom be our Lord. Father, Son, Lord, thank you for your grace. Come and say, let your peace be upon each other in this life, Father. And we bless each one here, Lord, with the peace of God. Let everyone grow to love him more, to know you more, to establish the work of the kingdom. Let your kingdom come to establish your Lord. Let us go and grow in knowledge and space. Thank you, Father God. Thank you very much.